Kia ora koutou, he mihi mahana kia koutou. I'm about to perform Zoom magic for me. So welcome to uh, this session on the Pacific. I am a bit hesitant thinking that I'm going to speak on behalf of all the Pacific. I think probably I'm going to speak from my location here on the whenua of the land of Ngāti Whātua and uh, from my own home base on the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand, uh, from my dad's people, Ngāti Pahuera, and from my mum's people, um, Pākehā, white of Danish distraction, extraction. So kia ora and um, thank you for allowing me to tune in like this to the conference. I was looking back at the slides of my colleague and colleagues and stood in awe and wondered what I was going to be saying in this session that might actually come up to the standard that they're setting on this panel. I want to begin with this firm location in Aotearoa and talk about kaupapa Māori. Kaupapa Māori is, when it's translated, just basically a Māori agenda. And I want to bring that Māori agenda to evaluation because I think when we're talking Indigenous evaluation, we're talking about evaluation that's local and belongs and is firmly located within the context of local people, by them and for them, and that's what Kaupapa Māori is. The picture you see here is of uh, a Māori hikoi, a protest, in front of our parliament buildings, uh, looking for the return of the seabed and foreshore, or at least the ability to contest our caretaking responsibility for the seabed and foreshore uh, that was being foreclosed by uh, the Labour government in the early OOs. When I talk about a Māori agenda and a return to being ordinarily Māori, ordinarily Indigenous, I'm reminded of the map that Graham Smith used to put up as an acetate on the overhead projector of our country up the right way. And this is pre-colonization. So you'll see here at uh, the bottom, the Ika a Maui, the fish that Maui in his, in his waka, in his canoe fished up to create Aotearoa. Our challenge when we enter into any evaluation endeavor is actually looking back to remember that this is the common sense of who we are, the ordinariness of who we are before our country was tipped upside down by colonization and we became irregular. You might also note in Canada that uh, when we're ordinary, we're at the top of the world and uh, Canada is actually tipped up at the bottom. <laughs> of course, it depends which way you look at the planet from outer space and which way you tilt your head. The ch other challenge for us is the myth of colonization being water under the bridge, that it's something we need to put past and behind ourselves to move forward. Actually, it's very much still our reality and the barrier to Māori prosperity and wellness. Evaluation in this space should enable us to look forward, to reclaim. It should acknowledge the value and potential of us as Indigenous peoples, that when we talk about the value, merit and worth of, evaluate, of, that, of an initiative within the context of evaluation, we should be looking at that from an Indigenous standpoint. Is that intervention of value to us? Does it have merit within our own cultural context? And do we see the worth in it for our people? Does it enable us to aspire to cultural success and greatness? If we think about that in terms of kaupapa Māori again, we think, does our evaluation take for granted that Ma being Māori is legitimate and valid? It's interesting, when I show this picture on the slide to people, some people look at it and go, oh, are those Māori boys running away? As if they're criminals and they're running away from crime, and that's not the viewpoint that we want people to take. We want a viewpoint that says here are some well and happy rangatahi, young people 
out, ready to bomb off that bridge, searching for the end that they can leap off into a world full of potential. We want a world where the survival of our culture and our language is imperative and our struggle for autonomy and well-being is seen as a struggle for our own survival. We think about that, then Kaupapa Māori evaluation is getting this kaupapa, this agenda right first. The second issue, the one raised by Linda Tuiwai Smith, is about employing the most appropriate methods and the most appropriate people so we can achieve that end in evaluation. I'm a firm believer that actually a lot of the things we say in Aotearoa are things that occupy Indigenous people the world over. That we seek a world in which there's room for many worlds. That the things that we talk about, the things that we say, are not just unique to us. That if we go back and we talk about getting the agenda right in evaluation, we're talking about getting and acknowledging the local, acknowledging Indigenous people and the importance of that local. We're talking about the language that's used, the questions that are asked, the things when we go back and look at the initiatives and interventions in our communities and we ask, who identified that as a problem? Who said we needed that? The expansion that we want to have as evaluation so that as it is a decolonizing force. I really encourage you to think about what that means in your own local context. And um, I know that Sergio is going to come back now and, and ask you if you've got any questions. Um, the questions are how can, for me, are how can you indigenize evaluation so that it is meaningful, valuable, and makes a contribution to the well being and indigenous people in that place? because wherever we go, we're going to find Indigenous people. Um, and part of the kaupapa, the agenda of eval Indigenous, is ensuring that evaluation is decolonizing for those people, and that they are the people that can say that the best, that it should be as our, our deaf community have taught us, that there should be nothing in Indigenous evaluation that is not about Indigenous peoples first, and it should not be anything that is without them. Kia ora. Thank you.